a very good morning to all the chetinad group with a legacy of over 60 years in education have been pioneer in providing progressive learning environment across tamil nadu the chetinad group is currently responsible for over 12000 students in 22 private government aided schools and colleges for medicine dentistry engineering law architecture physiotherapy nursing allied health sciences and pharmaceutical sciences uh, i am dr lakshmi professor and dean of chetinad school of pharmaceutical sciences welcoming you for today's session on the importance of regulatory affairs in pharma industry pharmacy professionals being an integral part of healthcare system con- constitute third largest professionals in the world the pharma is a evergreen and rapidly growing course of study with a plethora of opportunities in order to meet the growing demand of our pharma professional chetinad school of pharmaceutical sciences inculcates the concept of transformative learning in addition to the regular curriculum chetinad offers value added courses in collaboration with pharma industry to make our students job ready being an integrated campus we also offer a platform for interdisciplinary research the unique features of us include summer internship personality enhancement program experiential learning through projects and case study meditation and sports as a part of our curriculum our library and other infrastructure facilities tailored to accommodate the modern needs of the students so with this a uh, few introduction about our institute I take this opportunity to thank our guest, uh, Mr. Hema Kumar, for accepting our request to deliver or uh, to give insights about the regulatory affairs, the importance of regulatory affairs in pharma industry uh, to our students. Now, I would like to uh, call upon uh, Ms. Meenakshi, our student, to introduce our guest to the audience. It's my pleasure to introduce our resource person for today, Mr. Hema Kumar A.V. M.Pharm. He is a master degree holder in pharmacy and accomplished regulatory affairs professional with about 15 years of comprehensive experience at reputed pharmaceutical industries in the UK and India. He is currently working through his own limited company, Regulatory Excellence Solutions Limited, as the director of regulatory affairs. He did his bachelor's degree in Nagarjuna University, Gundu, followed by his master's degree in SRM University, Chennai. He was also felicitated with gold medal in master's degree in pharmaceutical sciences. He is also a registered member of PROPRA, the Organization for Professionals in Regulatory Affairs. He has presented many papers at national and international level. He has years of experience working in companies like PeopleSaw Limited, LaxoSmithKline Limited, and Mundi Pharma International Limited. It's a pleasure to have you here, sir. I once again welcome you. Thanks a lot, uh, Minakshi. Thank you, sir. Okay, so, ma'am. Uh, over to you, sir. You can uh, start the session. So uh, you can uh, say a few words about you and your experience in this field. So that uh, yeah. later on, our students are very much interested to interact with you in this regard. Yeah, thanks, ma'am. Thanks a lot uh, for taking this opportunity to invite me um, and also for hosting this session. Um, first of all, uh, thanks, students, for uh, attending this session. Um, I uh, myself, uh, Hema Kumar, who has done the masters in pharmacy, uh, and also um, um, back in India and worked back in India for about five or six years, and then migrated to UK um, uh, to uh, indulge in uh, research and experience. But finally, landed in regulatory affairs for the past few. almost uh, uh, 15 years now so uh, working in different sectors different projects different clients different formulations um having an, a business trying to expand the business in terms of the regulatory affairs but as a business we undertake the projects which are of a uh, whole uh, completely which we can be able to perform on our own by hiring the persons locally for as a consultants so it's just like an do whatever you wanted to do in terms of the regulatory affairs but try to learn something uh, try to try something which you can be able to excel yourself back in either in uk or anywhere in the world this is the only profession uh, or i can say the pharmacy is the only profession where you can survive 
wherever, anywhere in the world, either in Africa or in Latin region or in Gulf countries or in Western countries. But it's up to you guys where to select, which path you selected in case of the pharmacy. But any other profession requires a lot of registrations, a lot of um, um, customs and also lost a lot of issues. Uh, a troubleshooting should be done, done. But whereas in case of pharmacy, you can try to achieve your goals wherever, any part of the world, any part of the region. So what do you guys, this is myself as a brief introduction, but you can just go ahead with the session and then I can be able to go ahead with the slides, whatever I have prepared for. First of all, let's go into the questions or the slides, whatever your choice is. So what do you want to have? So are you ready with your question? Yes, ma'am. So who is going Please. to ask first? Mohan Yes, ma'am. Yes. I'll ask first. Hello, sir. Hello. So, what are the duties of the regulatory affairs director? Uh, director, as such, we need to undertake the projects, define the strategies, and also uh, we need to execute the strategies and define the milestones of the particular project. For example, in a basic terminology to elaborate to you for ease understanding, uh, I would say, just go ahead with the client discussion. First of all, first up, go ahead with the client discussion based on his requirement. For example, they wanted to register a particular drug product in a, one market or one region or group of markets or group of regions. Then undertake that project in terms of um, defining the project, which are the defined milestones, like where is the hurdles of to register a particular product in that particular region. Because each and every market has got a regulation to be followed in order to register. In that issue, in that instance, we need to define the milestones for every project. And before execution, we need to undertake, um, we need to understand those milestones and how to work on those milestones. Once we are uh, ongoing through the path, we need to interact with the health authorities. Of course, each and every region will have different languages, but fortunately we have got a uh, few consultants working in almost all the regions, which we be, which I will be hiring on case by case basis whenever it is required in terms of um, um, the particular project execution in that particular region. For example, in case of uh, Gulf countries, they used to speak in um, Arabic. In case of Latam region, they used to have their own uh, languages. So this is but the guy who is dealing in the particular region is called local regulatory who will be hiring and who will be working for me as a consultant. And then I will try to execute the project. For example, um, uh, the reason drugs are reason antivirals. And because I've recently worked on antivirals and also a few biologics as well. So in, in that case, um, uh, we used to work it for the different region and different. And the first global markets is uh, Europe and uh, US and Canada, and then Australia, and then Asian region. And emerging markets like LATAM region, LATAM in the sense, Latin American region, uh, like Brazil, Mexico, um, there are Montague, there are a lot of uh, 26 markets of LATAM region uh, in South Africa, which is a very, another a very huge market, but it's a revenue wise, it is a little bit low, but we need, we need to define the strategy by discussing with the supply department, which is called marketing in India. And back in Western countries, they used to call supply department. So we need to understand all those logistics and then define the strategy, execute the strategy, try to complete the project. As a director, I used to do that. But if anything goes wrong, for example, um, during the scientific advice meetings, the health authorities will try to object your strategy or object your registration process. If any claims is there, they will try to object that. So as a director, you should be capable of explaining them what is this and why is for the claim. And also in terms of... Uh, not only the claim, but also uh, the company strategies will be questioned off by the health authorities in terms of the drug registration process, drug product registration process, or APA registration process. So we have those has to be um, um, overcome as a director by having this particular expertise. Though, so I hope I made you clear. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Sir, good morning, sir. Good morning, Shruti. Sir, my question is, how can I get into regulatory affairs jobs after BFORM? Or what is the first step we need to do if we want to get in that field? That's a good question, though. First of all, you need to have a proper communication. Communication in the sense, whatever you have to 
inform or you have to highlight has to be other person should be understanding or else he has to be capable of uh, executing those communication properly first and foremost requirement is good communication and good presentation skills in the sense how you represent yourself in a department or in a company or in a whatever it is back in india they will use for the first theoretical theoretical knowledge how much worth you are in terms of theoretical it is in bachelors i am almost in uh, i can say top second or top third in my university and also those marks will evaluate your theoretical knowledge in terms of the practical knowledge once you get into the industry you will get the practical knowledge but to step into the industry back in india but in western countries it doesn't matter what, uh, you, you have to complete the degree that's it with good um, communication skills so that's it so but back in india you have to have your theoretical knowledge highest and the sense i can't say that oh lowest marks person will not be able to enter yes they do can enter uh, or else the um, or else the, those who have passed the b pharmacy can be able to enter it but at the same time you should be if if you want to excel if you want to try to upscale the ladder you need to have the good communication skills and um, first for first from foremost as as i said to you theoretical knowledge should be good and the practical knowledge as an, as soon as you get into the job you'll get it um, as a as a part of indian uh, culture you'll be able to get through that practical knowledge as well but communication skills you have to develop yourself nobody is going to be uh, teaching you this have to be done like this so you have to develop yourself those are the foremost and foremost skills which you need to have in order to excel in regulatory affairs thank you sir kapil yeah good morning sir uh, good morning sandeep uh, sir yeah. i am dr sandeep kumar professor of surgery Okay. And member of uh, our university institution innovation council. Wow, pleasure meeting you. Uh, sir, uh, during this pandemic time, is there is there any regulatory process uh, which can be expedited by the government, even if the pharma company is not willing to do so? Sorry, uh, can I ask you in, a question? In, in production of the drug uh, during this pandemic time. can the government have a say on the regulatory process in a pharma mm -hmm. company Regu sorry uh, you are asking but during this pandemic process you are any pharma company has to stop the stop or hinder the production process is it right yeah can the regulatory process be expedited by a government order yes of course there is there are a lot of other health authorities have uh, during this pandemic process whatever the pharma companies try to execute the new products they have called fast track applications so in this fast track applications for example you have an any antiseptic solution for example like uh, any other detol which has got detol is a best antiseptic solution back savlon is the best antiseptic solution so in, in in terms of the antiseptic solution if you got any of the few claims that has been proved by clinically and you got the clinical data to prove that um additional claims then this all the health authorities have uh, opened up the fast track application route where you can able to get within just in um, weeks time in order to get your approval back in the market with the supply but in order to have that claim the companies will claim, uh, will try to focus an early of 6 to 8 months early if it is generic product if it is a branded product at least 3 to 4 years early in order to get that claim back into market before Uh, any sort, not only the pandemic, before any sort of issues or anything else, because continuous program of clinical uh, investigations will be going on, carrying on each and every product as a part of a product um, excellency, or else we can say product globalization. Whatever we uh, the terminologies will be different, but it's one of the same ways they wanted to investigate into further claims in order to have back into the market and to beat the competitors. Though, because. Uh, i want to make sure make you guys one thing aware whatever the uh, manufacturing products back in india is generics generics you might be knowing the basic difference between the generics and branded so branded generics is a, just a copy version of branded drug product branded drug products are clinically proved whereas generic products are bioequivalently proved you might be studying further in the second year third year what is bioequivalency and bioavailability as well so so in that terminology 
all the germanic products which are manufactured in india and exported back to either african countries or gulf or latam region or states because states is the united states is the first global player for germanic products so uh, even the uh, the major shop like teva which is the global um, top one germanic player and arbindo which is a top second as of now in terms of the revenue like Uh, so um, all these players will be trying to focus on the genetic product because it's got just reverse engineering process to get the bioavailability done comparing with the um, branded product going to the market that's it simple so it's called branded generics though it's not actual branded i just wanted to clarify that but these branded companies will try to pump in a lot of money in order to uh, get this clinical investigation done ahead of the claims expiry uh, as a part of the ipr Uh, intellectual property rights which is another department which take care of the claims and also there's um, um, registration processes but as such i want to make you make sure that all the generic products will have only bioequivalency proved okay if a drug is patented by a company yeah and if the drug is used during this pandemic and mm-hmm. govern ask the other pharma companies to produce it even though the patent is with the one of the company yes of course in in that instances the regulatory will play an important role along with the liaison with the ipr intellectual property rights department we have a scheme a royalty scheme so for example x companies have got the patent for example pfizer has got the patent for this particular drug but uh, astrazeneca or else um, uh, they wants to manufacture that in that instance they'll try to make a royalty agreement for whatever the capsules or whatever the vaccines or what will be vials that is being manufactured by gsk or astrazeneca they have to pay the royalty to the pfizer if the patent is not expired that royalty agreement will be earning more than more than millions and billions so uh, simply i can uh, make a simple example in terms of um, um, this covid-19 vaccines itself oxford university doesn't have the capacity to produce or manufacture or do the research just the basic research the pivotal research will be done in oxford university whereas astrazeneca will pump the money into that research whereas gsk will manufacture because in belgium they have got the very vast manufacturing side producing more than 10 millions a day of vaccines which is a production site for gsk back in belgium here so that will be the global manufacturer whereas the global supplier will be astrazeneca where they have to pay the royalty to the astrazeneca for the supplying this but as a manufacturing front gsk will make some profit but as a royalty by indulging the money to the, um, the pumping the money into this research to oxford university and to the exact scientists who have been working off will be taken up by the astrazeneca as a royalty so here the royalty agreement will play that's a very confidential but yes there is a chance whoever has got the patent they can be able to other generic players can be for example another uh, best example for you because Uh, i hope you might be reading about the sun pharma news which is in amdabad sun pharma one of the global generic player they have got a lot of generics and their share price is booming up like anything because they used to uh, act as a contract manufacturing site which is called cmbos so uh, they will be paying the royalty to the pfizer to gsk to astrazeneca whatever the um, like amgen which is an another biologics player ucb which is an another global uh, biologics player so they will be paying off the royalty and they'll try to manufacture and distributor will be as such gastrogenica who have got the because the royalty agreement says a supply for example astrogenic will have a strong footprint in european region like um, uk and also western europe and eastern europe and the ucb will have a strong footprint in uh, gulf countries though in that cases they'll try to uh, pay, share the royalty for the supply in gcc region or they'll share the royalty in supply in the uh, european region separately so uh, it will define where what when and how much so it's yeah the scope is there in short So, any other questions? Yes, sir. I would like to ask some yes, questions, sir. Yes. Is there any field experience needed after getting a master's degree to get into the regulatory affair field, sir? I don't think so, Meena Shri, because as of now, I can see a lot of uh, B Pharm uh, aspiring candidates are also till date, till date. Uh, I don't think so. You require any field experience, but. if you want to get get into industry you need to understand which is more comfortable for you in terms of your for your personality concern so if you are a less communicating person there are other departments within pharmacy itself within the industry itself whereas if you are more communicating person if you if you 
vocabulary is just a normal english language you can be able to improve it. it's not a big deal though he's whenever we we are studying in india we will be trying for the theoretical knowledge rather than the practical knowledge but once we get into the industry it it automatically develops yourself to how to communicate yourself up to uh, progress yourself but i don't think so it's a field um, work is required but the field work where is required is you have to highlight your theoretical knowledge a lot and you have to present yourself the best in the interviews of course there is a lot of campus interviews offline campuses are um, undertaking by all the all the generic players back in india because recently i've heard in one of the amdabad in vocart pharmaceuticals as well and also there's um, uh, zydus cadilla everyone is hiring from the basic from bachelor degrees or with the master degrees um straight from the campuses or else offline campuses interviews are being conducted so that they'll try to evaluate they'll try to have the um, um, group discussions all this communications exam as a little bit of uh, screening exams will be there so yes they have lot of other ways to get in but i don't think so for regulatory files no i don't think so any field work is like that but if you want to excel yourself you need to, you need to have the continuous education because i have i have done the masters in pharmaceuticals pharmaceutics but i've been selected for uh, fr and which is a formulation research and development but because of my passion into regulatory files because i've worked in after finishing my bachelor's degree i've selected into uh, dr reddy's where i've done i haven't done any sort of uh, field work though even after finishing of masters i haven't done any sort of um, um, field work though because even till today none of my friends or none of my uh, known contacts who are uh, doing the um, who are pursuing their bachelor's of pharmacy bachelor's in pharmacy they are not doing any field work because it's all you you have to get through offline campus of course online campus and offline campuses are there so get through that all you need is as i said to you you should be having a very good presentation skills i mean actually that's it nothing else how you present yourself in front of the interview that's it in terms of regulatory affairs and quality assurance rather than other departments you need to have the theoretical knowledge that's it like formulation research and development ipr you don't require any much of communication all you need is system work and you're trying to evaluate if you want to get into clinical regulatory you don't require this much of communication even if you want to get into global regulatory yes you need to have a proper communication skills with good presentation skills as well how you present yourself in front of the client in front of the health authorities because health authorities um for your good understanding of knowledge we indians will have a very 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 far better communication when compared to the global um uh, professionals i can say because i have dealt with a lot of uh, professionals around the globe either in the gulf countries in the latam region us in states states in the sense canada us and also in uh, latin american in european if you see the eastern european countries their english is very 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 poor but they will try to communicate what they have to tell to the other person simple so in terms of getting into regulatory no field work is required but um yes theoretical knowledge is required but uh, field work i don't think so but if you would pursue masters and then if you want to get into regulatory i don't think so you should require but of course first step will be first break will be a, a little bit hurdle but you need to get through that once you get into that that's it sky is your limit thank you sir you're welcome hi sir i am kartik hi kartik yeah how are you sir very well thank you how with you yes uh, yes regulatory affair differ from country to country sir sorry does regulatory affair differ from mm -hmm. country to country uh yeah it's not country it is it's uh, we try to divide as a regional wise though it is uh, regional wise in the sense gulf countries for example gulf countries gcc gulf country gulf council where we have got about 18 to 20 uh, market sorry 16 markets and a one umbrella so all the 16 markets will follow the one uh, regulation regulation that's it so all these regulations has to be common whereas a few markets in the gulf they have their individual regulations in the same wise latam region is called latin american region all the markets will have almost uh, the module 1 requirements will be different whereas module 2 to module 5 requirements is same for all these markets in case of us and canada sorry us sorry they will follow the us fda guidelines and all the markets will follow the ich guidelines the basis for all these guidelines is ich which is um, which i have already represented in my slides i'll just go through in a few minutes so ich guideline is the parent or the basis for all these guidelines all these like usfda australian U ema is called the european guidelines or also latin american region gulf asian markets region and also asian in the sense all the asian markets like india china 
um, uh, Japan, Japan will have own, the, own guidelines, but the basis will be ICH only, which is a harmonized guideline, which will be imported to their local regulations or local requirements uh, from the ICH only. ICH will try to harmonize all the uh, region's uh, guidelines and requirements in general, but they have to um, um, re-regulate re based on their uh, local requirements, local in the sense, regional market. For example, India is a highly humid country, sorry, highly hottest climate country. So we have to have the temperature more than 30 degrees Celsius, the storage conditions. Whereas in case of Gulf, it's the same. Whereas in case of EU, mm. we don't cross more than 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, hardly we used to cross, uh, that in the peak summer, we used to cross only 25. So the storage conditions will be less than 20 degrees Celsius. So we have to evaluate different types of storage conditions during the stability studies. So that has to be impinged based on the uh, ICH guidelines. So the basis would be ICH. So once you've got the basis ICH knowledge, then you can be able try to extrapolate based on the regional requirements. Though. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. So once you get on to the year three or year four, you'll try to understand more and more how, uh, in terms of the formulations, in terms of the um, uh, through practical knowledge, of course, in the labs, and also in terms of the um, theoretical knowledge, why, what, where, when, in the in, in terms of the pharmacy. So then you can be able to decide which is best field for me. Of course, it's a too early, but I'm very glad that nowadays these type of interactions are going on. When we pursue the bachelor's and master's, we don't have this much of interactions, though. <laughs> we try to evaluate the path and we try to get into the path by the uh, guidance of Lakshmi. So all these teachers, I should be uh, proud to have these teachers as my uh, professors. Please go ahead. Thank you. You're welcome, Karthik. Hi, sir. Hello, Gokul. Yeah. Sir, what is the main quality to for this profession? Sorry, come again. What is, what are the main quality for this profession? Main qualities for? This for this profession. For this pharmacy. Regulatory, or, regulatory affairs professions. So regulatory affairs. The mm. quality I said to you, you need to be having a lot of um, theoretical knowledge at this basic level to get into uh, regulatory affairs. And also, you should be having a good communication skills and representation skills. Representation means how you have to represent yourself to the health authorities or to your uh, dossier content. Because the regulatory affairs is nothing but just compiling all the research work into your five modules. Briefed, consolidated five modules. So module one to module five. How do you represent yourself in that five modules based on the guidelines? Because each, as I said to you, ICH guidelines is the consolidated version of the all it's called parent guideline though. So how you try to consolidate your dossier content by following the guidelines into the um, uh, dossier and represent to the health authorities. Of course, they will shoot up with a lot of questions like clarifications, requests for information, request questions has to be clarified along with the supporting justifications, supporting documents, and loads of further steps will be there which we have to follow through this. But how you represent yourself in short, in brief, how you represent yourself in the dossier uh, and how much good in, uh, in terms of the communication skills. Of course, communication skills, by the way, you proceed, your, uh, you accelerate to the next year or though the third year. So once you get into the master's, you will try to develop yourself with the communication. But I would say, yes, try to develop at this. This is the best time for you guys to um, develop your communication in order to get into any industrial position, not into regulatory affairs, any industrial position though have the communication skills because if you see because i'm also from south india near to chennai only so um we south indians will be lacking a little bit i can't say huge a little bit lacking in terms of the um uh, communication skills out of 50 to 100 person uh, out of 100 50 people will be trying to uh, communicate more and more but rest of the 50 will be lacking a little bit not, i can say a huge difference though bit difference in terms of the uh, communication skills. So that is a major milestone for you guys to excel yourself into this position. Please try to develop your communication. Communication in the sense, whatever you represent to your friend, not to your friends. So the other person has to understand your inner feelings and what you try to communicate in the sense, yes, I will go through this. This is my clarification. This is what I have to say. So this type of communication has to be improved a lot in order to get, get into any position. As I'm not sure how familiar you are in terms of the industrial position, I'll just go through um, uh, a few minutes later. Uh, what are the best 
pharmacy because um, pharmacy industrial positions, but I'll uh, take you through a few minutes later. Is this clear? Tukul? Okay, sir. Thank you. Any, questions? Any other questions? Hi, sir. Good morning. Hi, Rashma. Good morning. Uh, sir, once we get into regulatory affair, what do you expect out of us? That's a good question, though. Um, so, expectation in the sense, you need to be um, compiling the dossiers, first of all. Compiling the dossiers means you need to have the theoretical knowledge. Theoretical in terms of the formulations. Of formulations of what? The drug product or APIs. APIs means in, in the third year or final year, you will be having a synthetic chemistry, sorry, synthetic chemistry and organic chemistry, which is going to be learning with the synthesis of the chemicals into active pharmaceutical ingredients, APIs. And also, you need to have a very good knowledge about the uh, excipients, which excipients, what levels, and what level of analytical test will impact. Uh, the formulation in terms of the other analytical parameters. This type of technical knowledge will be improved. I can say we, this will be taught back in a theoretical in, 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 your, in your subjects only. Like pharmaceutics is a one subject where you will try trying to learn about the formulation characteristics, how to develop the formulation. For example, hardness is impaired, then what we have to adjust in terms of the formulation. That's a total scale manufacturing or we can say total scale research projects. There you can understand what need to be understood, what need to be done in terms of the formulation developments. So further, once this formulation is categorized or is developed, or what we need to do in terms of uh, trying into manufacturing sector, sort of like um, transferring to the manufacturing sector, which is the tech transfer, which is another subject which we'll be learning off in pharmaceutics as well. So tech transfer will uh, technology transfer or tech transfer is in short. So they will be trying to impart this pivot scale into sorry pilot scale into pivotal scale or pilot pivotal scale into large scale of manufacturing like thousands of kilos hundreds of kilos of um, um, uh, drug product so this product in terms of the stability what is the requirements which you'll be learning off in your final years uh, pharmaceutical subject so in terms of theoretical if you're strong enough then you can be you can be reaching your to the expectations of the industrial person like writing the dossier by having this theoretical knowledge you try to club those theoretical aspects into the practical aspects of this uh, formulation development and try to consolidate the dossier. Once the dossier is reached, that's it. But I can say, um, in order to um, uh, write these dossiers and also write these uh, contents, understand these contents, uh, the, all the pharmaceutical companies will be trying to uh, import you with the uh, required trainings. So even I have had the trainings uh, from the ground level. Of course, the theoretical knowledge is good enough for you to start kickstart. In terms of the practical knowledge, that will be gained by through the trainings and once you get into the industry. It's not that much uh, easy enough, but you need to have a lot of hard work to be done at the background. And also hard work at this stage is try to gain the theoretical knowledge. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. I hope you have made it clear. Yes. Thank you. So any other questions, guys? Good morning, sir. Uh, good morning, Divya. Sir, my question is, how do you get to know about this job, sir? Because before this session, I don't know what is public record. So I have some curiosity about how did you know that? That's a good <laughs> so still, I think you're in year two or um, year one, I'm not sure. But uh, in year three or year four, I think, so you'll be having a subject called regulatory affairs a little bit. It's a small topic in pharmaceuticals, um, as a uh, subtopic in the pharmaceuticals as well. So that's an uh, oh, um, that's where you need to know about the regulatory phase is. You'll come to know theoretically. But myself, I've evaluated while I'm in, after completing my bachelor's in pharmacy, um, when I'm attended for an, a small interview back in Hyderabad. Actually, I've attended for formulation research as a technical operations guy. So in that interview, I came to know that there is a regulatory affairs profession. And um, uh, one of a couple of my friends who are known friends, uh, I can say as a seniors or friends. So uh, they have uh, highlighted me saying that there is a department called regulatory files, which will be suited for you. I try to explore it. Then I try to go through my year four subject. What is that regulatory files? And because when I'm uh, trying to um, um, write my year four, 
I'm not that much uh, memorable, memorable person, sir. I just gone through once again and try to attend the interview. Uh, luckily, fortunately, I can say um, I've been shortlisted. And then um, further proceeded with the further as a plant regulatory affairs. There is a sub branch called plant regulatory affairs, which is an uh, uh, of course each and every pharmaceutical company will have that. So that plant regulatory affairs personnel have been selected in Dr. Reddy's as such. So in that you will be trying to work in the in the manufacturing plant. representing as a regulatory affairs person so in that you'll be trying to liaise with the quality assurance stability production formulation development and also um the regulatory affairs actual global regulatory affairs so the five branches which is the which is in trim um, plant regulatory affairs department we're trying to deal with them so on a day to day basis so this has enabled me okay there is another opportunity for us to upscale global regulatory affairs okay then uh after flying off after migrating to uk uh, i came to know that there is a regional regulatory affairs local regulatory affairs clinical regulatory affairs non clinical regulatory affairs and uh, product strategies regulatory affairs so uh, and also project management regulatory affairs in order to excel yourself upgrade or up get into the ladder very fastly in a fast pace you need to have for everything you need to have the theoretical knowledge followed by the your practical skills from the ground level so there are i can see a lot of uh, consultants who used to work for me on a project by project basis they used to have they don't have that much of um, field knowledge or manufacturing knowledge all they've imparted the skills of communication and um, the um, uh, formulation knowledge in terms of specifically for example medical devices yes they will have only the medical devices but not into the manufacturing sector is just the, the uh, regulation sector so if you have the manufacturing knowledge as well as the um, regulatory knowledge then you will be upskilling the ladder like in like in a fast pace that's why i've just selected the plant regulatory up front as i said to you is just because of communicating with your friends okay i'm uh, i'm going for the interview so and so uh, i got the chance to get into to know more about regulatory affairs get into that field thank you sir you're welcome a very good morning sir i'm abhishek uh, and morning. i have a question abhishek. yeah please so i have a doubt like whether pharmaco vigilance and regulatory affairs are more or less the same or uh, they are completely uh, it's different. two different departments though abhishek uh, pharmaco vigilance is a two depart two different departments but interrelated i can say because the pharmaco vigilance will try to uh, impart i'm not sure how much you are aware of, aware about pharmaco vigilance and drug safety because this two two departments will go side by side but regulatory is an Uh, once again it's interrelated uh, with all this because without the regulatory person regulatory fast person you can't be able to register your drug product up to the health authority and getting into that drug product into the market and also the post marketing surveillance will be done by the pharmaco vigilance once again it is routed to health authorities through regulatory affairs as i said to you it's interrelated the regulatory affairs is just like a gatekeeper for the entire pharmaceutical company to liaise with the health authority and to the external world if anything goes wrong for example for your ease of understanding if any vaccine trials are going off uh, luckily the post uh, phase 3 clinical trials are well done and the uh, the um, um, the product is gone for registration and then approved by the uh, concerned health authorities then it gone into the market whatever the adverse reactions for example any patients taking that drug product have got any um, um, adverse reactions they'll first try to contact with the pharmaco vigilance person the person in charge the first piece of person who will be contacting with the patients or with the clinically affected person they will be interacting with the pharmaco vigilance scientists or the pharmaco vigilance doctors or the physicians who are the, they are responsible the qppv what we call as qppv qualified pharmaco vigilance professional okay so this qppv will be interacting with the patients and also they'll try to take the details of the patients in terms of what the problems encountered by by taking the particular vaccine or drug product and then this will be consolidated this will be back investigated with the quality assurance and the regulatory affairs person and we have to report this to the health authorities as part of adverse reactions and uh, if you see the five years back history of the particular product we need to encounter we need to enlist what are the problems encountered in the particular drug product for example a patient a pregnant lady have taken a drug, drug product then they have, she has encountered an itching or nausea or vomiting or some adverse reactions like um, any other adverse reactions in your in which you'll be trying to learn in in your um, um, year 3 and year 4 pharmacological uh, 
uh, subject. So that type of problems has to be listed off in properly investigated in terms of the ground level, from the ground level, from the manufacturing ground level onwards, and then it has to be reported to the health authorities. But the reporting, we have a time scales and also um, anniversary scales in order to re uh, report that to the health authorities. It depends from market to market, but these are interrelated as, a, as I can say, go and sidetrack to the regulatory affairs. But regulatory affairs is a gatekeeper, as I said to you, for your ease of understanding. He is a main gatekeeper, how you, you're going to communicate with the health authority. Each and every health authorities will have hundreds of requirements, my friend. So those requirements has to be understood. You should be constantly learning the up, updating regulations. It's just not like, okay, I studied in the past for 15, 15 years back. This is the regulations at that point of time. Now it would might yeah, within a year's time it is it will be changed a lot with respect to each and every country. If you are concerning about only local markets or one market or one region, of course there will be not much changes. But if you are um, uh, dealing as a global person, then global in the sense entire globe is as simple as that. So each and every corner of the market or every corner of the um, uh, region, something or the other will be changing off in terms of the clinical, in terms of the qualities in terms of the manufacturing, in terms of the validations, in terms of the stability. So one of the other thing will be continuously changing. So that keeps your brain like that in terms of learning. In the sense, shop. So both are inter goes side by side. Thank you. So any other questions, guys? Ma'am, uh, I can't. Yes. Yeah, I can't hear any of the questions from. This so, is all your doubts are clear. So, I think, sir. Uh, Hi, hello. sir. I have one question, sir. Hello. Hi, sir. Good morning. My name is Kani Morris, sir. So, yeah. my yes. question is, what are the quality we need for regulatory affairs job in abroad, sir? Abroad. So. First of all, in uh, foreign countries, uh, that's a good question. When I evaluated myself after doing my um, first, after working for about six years back in uh, India, when I, when I thought to migrate myself, the first and foremost question which I asked myself is the same question. What is my requirement? So each and every country has the same um, uh, requirements after exploring myself, after realizing with this many consultants, health authorities, only requirement is communication there. Communication and also trying to learn yourself with the expertise knowledge in terms of the guidelines. Guidelines, yes. Each and as I said to you, different guidelines will have different um, uh, requirements and uh, communication and presentation. And also not that you should be having a proper um, expl explaining. Uh, of course, it's a part of com communication only, but you need to explain yourself in terms of the guidelines with, re with respect to the requirements. Each and every company will sc scrutinize only that. And also competency, which is an another uh, in the Western world we use, they used to have these same questions in the competency world because have um, uh, competency based questions will be uh, and ha highlighted, which is a part of communication only. But there's a specific sub branch called competency based questions, which is like, uh, um, why do you select this job? Um, for example, I'm just like um, uh, letting you know what competency means, um, how competent you are in terms of this pharmaceutical, in, in terms of this knowledge. But as such, finishing off your B form and flying off to the abroad, I would say you're, that will narrow down your skills. Uh, in the sense, because here in the Western world, they'll try to subcategorize each and every department in the industry as a narrowed down to a certain, certain standards. Whereas in India, it's a broad, whereas you can explore all the relevant um, uh, fields or relevant profiles within the industry. Whereas in Western world, it will be subcategorized, narrowed down to a large extent. For example, if you want to keep the mouse here, that's it. There will be one department to keep the mouse. They'll be lying, uh, they'll be typing a um, particular SOP, which is standard operating procedure. That's it. Your skills will be narrowed down. Whereas in India, we can have broad knowledge, how to enhance in each and every department, what the roles and responsibilities will be uh, highlighted. And you can be able to expose yourself to the, all these broadened skills. So in, once you get a little bit more skill, you can be try to uh, get into the industry. Whereas if you want to pursue a master's back in uh, Western world, yes, you can pursue and get into the industry easily. As I said to you, competency has to be how competent you, are, you have to be proving yourself. 
that's the major requirement in uh, abroad uh, pharmaceutical companies those who are pursuing the masters in uh, science which is called msc in back in uk or else in uh, us because even i've tried for my ms uh, to pursue my masters back in uh, uh, us but unfortunately um, there are a lot of hurdles which i couldn't be able to meet so uh, then i've pursued my masters back in india itself so the major requirement is how competent you are in your theoretical background simple thank you sir welcome hi sir hi pavitra good morning my question what are different departments in a regular affairs sir yeah first one is project management regulatory project management that is one department sub departments um uh, broadly if you want to classify the cmc which is a chemistry manufacturing controls which is a very very vast department so i can say the first and foremost Uh, sub category within the regulatory files which is quality sections of the dossier that Im will impart the quality sec not only the quality section but they have to interact with the formulation development stability quality assurance um, and also the supply marketing strategy is being communicated by chemistry manufacturing controls department sub department which is called cmc that's one which is called quality as as such quality department quality regulatory files second one is clinical regulatory files which is a clinical stage in case of indian generic drug products we used to have the bab b studies which is called bioavailability and bioequivalence studies department which is called clinical on non clinical bioequivalence uh, in india which is called bioequivalence regulatory or bab regulatory which is as a simple and then we in western world they will call us clinical and non clinical as well non clinical which is completely dif different and uh, we don't have that much emphasized in back in indian pharmaceutical companies but in western world yes they do have non clinical in a broad scale we have to uh, sub categorize that as well as a non clinical regulatory phase which is very required uh, very most required for the branded drug product to get into the market so third one is project strategy which is a regulatory strategy department fourth one is um, compliance regulatory compliance and fifth one is regulatory operations regulatory operations in the sense all these regulated markets like any other market in the world they will have the um, uh, dossier content to be electronical version of the ectd or ctd patents ctd patents still a few african region and also few latam regions will have the ctd patent which is common technical dossier is called ctd so this ctd patent is still being followed um, uh, and then most of the regulated markets have uh, gone through the ectd which is electronic version of ctd so then you have to have an regulatory operations sub department where they will try to publish your dossier into their local requirements and try to uh, put into their database for the review and also approval so that particular department duties will be categorized as regulatory operations these are the five major or i can say broad categories of regulatory affairs but once you dig in uh, interior part of that so like quality cmc also there will be valid sub validation uh, or regulatory um, just give me one second please uh, yeah there is a pending there is a calling bell i'm sorry for that so um the if you sub categorize that uh, there will be having um, regulatory um, um, validation regulatory uh, quality in within the quality itself regulatory validation regulatory stability regulatory module 1 module 1 in the sense labeling department yep another major uh, or minor ones is within the quality is labeling Uh, labeling in the sense, um, whatever you see within a drug product. For example, if you bought a cup of cough syrup, within that cough syrup there will be a pill which is called patient information leaflet. So that particular department which deals with that department is called labeling department. Pill SPC is summarized product, summary of product characteristics, which is an the other department which is being dealt by the um, um, labeling department. The SPC will be going back to the health authorities. SPC is the full version of um, uh, your product drug product. drug product information in terms of the pharmacokinetics in terms of the pharmacodynamics in terms of the stability requirement in some of the formulation in terms of the quality in terms of the your um, um, in terms of the shelf life storage conditions and manufacturing uh, license numbers and also all this uh, uh, full detailed version is called summary product summary, summary of product characteristics which is an uh, modeling uh, labeling department so all this five to six department will constitute the regulatory file but if you are expert in a global then all these five sub categories will be in your hand you have to manage these five categories on a one umbrella this global person will be representing yourself as a, a from your on behalf of your company uh, to the health authorities but all these five will not be communicating all five will not be communicating to the health authority 
the global will have the global regulatory affairs will person will be having that leverage to communicate the health authority as i said to you all these five persons are technically sound enough but not competent in terms of the communication skills if you want to become a global regulatory affairs you need to have more and more vocabulary more and more communication skills to communicate with this but to communicate with these five categories technical oriented person you should be technically capable in order to cap uh, in order to communicate with these five sub category persons within the regulatory affairs itself got it thank you sir yes, you who is this uh, sorry yeah I yep. think by this time they would have covered almost everything what you would <laughs> to present in the PowerPoint Sorry. presentation, and uh, I should say uh, at this point I want to make a note uh, that uh, uh, they those questions whatever they asked are on their own without yep. any guidance of us. Yeah, so, that's really uh, glad that they are having. They, I can see some enthusiastic. Yes, yes. But see one thing: theoretical knowledge just. only first step of your life in getting to the industry if you are preferring to get into industry of course there is a modeling of um, uh, in the brains of indian brain saying that pharmacy means medical shop please try to come out of that particular well there is a huge 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 broaden scope for you guys i can say that because i've explored back in india back in um, um uh, uk and also back in states because i have a lot of friends and contacts and also a lot of consultants back in um, um, inter european world Uh, like western and eastern european i'll be traveling a lot within the western and eastern european countries but also to the asian markets singapore of course i can say there is a huge scope for you guys as a as a part of being a pharmacy professional but don't try to limit yourself to only particular pharmacy shop or outlets or something distributors no you have to think ahead of your skills there is an industry which manufactures which is there is a lot of scope if you go into for example if you're less communicating person that's not an degrade yourself please don't try to degrade yourself if a less communicating person and if you are technically enough then get into validation they, they they doesn't require any communication just your technical expertise and they'll paying huge 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 salary of bugs um uh, to get one validation report done and also environmental uh, scientists which are a uh, pharmacy oriented persons only bachelors and uh, or uh, masters in pharmacy or bachelors in pharmacy persons only environmental scientists evra reports which is in a clinical non clinical sections which they paying huge bucks in order to get that expertise it's not that much simple all you need is a technical knowledge so try to be capable of either technical or communication to get into regulatory or into not in regulatory any pharmacy industrial positions either technical expertise or communication expertise that's it you'll get into that hema kumar uh, we also want to know what is the definition for that huge because we keep hearing from everyone huge huge, huge. huge. Yes, but we it's really cool. don't know uh, what is the figure for that huge please tell us so that uh, i can say infinity uh, capabilities man because once you step into the industry okay. starting from the first point of industrial oriented person like either formulation development if you have masters or bachelors don't worry bachelors also they'll be hiring with the formulation development associates where they'll be working under the project managers or project scientists because each and every company will have different organograms and disintegrations but as such i want to give a snapshot where they, where they can be able to understand so formulation development uh, under this formulation development also there will be sub categorization called lab oriented scientists where they will try to work on the pivotal skill batches developmental batches and also in this uh, that is a and also analytical development analytical for, for example any formulation development scientists they want to develop the formulation who is going to analyze who is going to develop the method by following the pharmacopoeia so you have the british pharmacopoeia you have the you know indian pharmacopoeia you have the united states pharmacopoeia each and every pharmacopoeia will have their own methods for each and every excipients so this analytical method development team will be trying to develop the uh, methods for these new formulations uh, for all the, even for the generic methods generic drug products also we need to develop the methods without the method development analytical method development they can't be able to um, analyze the um, manufacturer developed formulations so this is an sub interlinked methods for analytical method development also there will be analytical analysis lab and also analysis validation analysis labs that's called wet chemistry or wet labs where they will be hiring only bachelors in pharmacy candidates um, especially because they will be having analysis knowledge and also formulation knowledge a little bit of formulation knowledge also so they'll be hiring with the analysis labs wet chemistry that's your stepping stone to get into the industry that's a, as a part of um, uh, if you are still 
um, passionate enough, pursue the masters, get into the analytical AR and D departments. So FR and D department, AR and D department, validation departments, bioavailability and bioequivalence. If you're well enough in your uh, pharmacokinetics, like if you have studied your pharmaceutics and uh, pursued um, uh, pharmaceutics and masters in master's degree, so you can get into the either into pharmacokinetics or pharmaco, um, um, pharmacological department, or you can get into the the foremost regulatory quality assurance, stability in quality assurance, also plant quality assurance, global quality assurance, corporate quality assurance. And also um, uh, in regulatory affairs as a, as a category of the major five branches, in this you require the ba be, uh, bachelor's in pharmacy only. Back in India, they will be hiring bachelor's in pharmacy. So if you, if you visit abroad, they will try to uh, have either BSc person, which is a normal bachelor's, bachelor's in science also will be um, uh, selected for this type of subcategorized departments. But in abroad, the manufacturing sector is very, very low. I can say in numbers, mostly development will be done, but as as in manufacturing sector back in India or in China only. So Asian markets, especially not in China as well. Um, Asian markets like Indonesia, uh, Vietnam, Philippines, um, Cambodia. So these type of Asian markets will be covered for the manufacturing sector. But, but the developmental aspects, if you're passionate enough, you, you have to have your master's as a minimum criteria. PhD, it's up to you guys. If you wanted to pursue, it's not. So in terms of huge, these many departments are there, ma'am. Each and every department will have subcategories. All they will be hiring off bachelor's in pharmacy candidates uh, to get into those uh, departments. Of course, salary will be low when compared to the uh, other categories. But once you're expert in one particular area, the money will flow back to you. Simple. I can say simple. Right? Because when I started my career, I should not be saying a man's salary should not be revealed off. I started my career at 7,000 rupees. <laughs> Just seven, seven bucks right now. <laughs> so don't mind about the salary. Don't mind about the um, um, very area where you are in, but don't compare yourself, compare within yourself to get into the industry. Once you get into the industry, sky is your limit. There is a lot of huge scopes for you to get up Excel. If you have the right knowledge, right uh, information, then you can be able to up upscale the later. So you should, because we don't have the seniors that much of uh, got, gone into the industry as well. So myself and one of my friend who are, we both are enthusiastic in uh, exploring the outside world rather than the, uh, the same old marketing, the same old um, um, other fields like shops or something else, something else. So we wanted to explore something out, out of the box. Thinking out of the box is major criteria for us to get into the industry. But nowadays industry is oriented uh, uh, jobs and everything are being uh, made publicly through internet um, and a lot of consultants are working to get hire the uh, fresh graduates in pharmacy or all um, either masters or bachelors. So they'll be trying to get into, get into this industry. Of course, the salary, the pay scale will be defined as per the company's norms. Either small or big, it doesn't matter. All you need is to develop your internal knowledge and try to move on. So I, may, I hope I made you clear with these huge requirements, ma'am. The huge opportunities are there, but it depends on the person to person, uh, their perceptions, ma'am. So I can, okay. all I can say it's their own perception. Yes, yes. Of course. So any other question? Hi, sir. Hello, yes, sir. My question is, what exactly is done in a regulatory office, sir? So what exactly? Is done in a regulatory affair office. Is done. Yeah, as I said to you, compiling your dossiers day to day, you need to, um, if it is in um, Indian, com Indian generics uh, marketed, um, generics company, generics manufacturing company, then the compiling the dossiers, life cycle maintenance activities, which is another uh, part of CMC's um, rules and responsibilities, compliance, and also um, um, change controls. I can go through that in depth knowledge once you got the, a little bit more about the formulation knowledge. So dossier compilation, review, authoring, submission to the health authorities, and also uh, life cycle maintenance. For example, if you, if you are hiring, uh, sorry, if you're purchasing in a sub, uh, raw material, for example, a formulation consists of raw materials and the active ingredients, okay? So X raw material is being supplied by X manufacturer or X supplier. If you want to change that supplier, because economically, all these, at the end of the day, the pharmaceutical companies is a business-oriented company. So, Whoever provides the same quality of raw material and they're charging more, they'll try to check for the supply department main duties to get the supplier, whoever uh, charges very low. 
then the regulatory picture come into uh, picture saying that yes this supplier having the same quality raw material we wanted to change in the dossier that comes under the life cycle maintenance activity so we need to highlight to the health authority yes i am pro- procuring this particular x raw material for this drug product from x supplier so i am changing this x supplier to the y supplier which who is have got the same old uh, um, um quality and also same quality in terms of the pharmacopeial standards so i'm just trying to change this with particular variation type those are called variations to the dossier so initial submissions variations renewals as a, one of my one of our friend have asked for the pharmacovigilance so this pharmacovigilance is also uh, inter part of this variations life cycle maintenance activities um, um like drug safety has to be defined any bab uh, studies has to be updated as a, as a part of life cycle maintenance activities so a lot of sub activities involved in the regulatory phase uh the ssc to broaden this um, uh, categorization is called quality part of the regulatory phase which is called chemistry manufacturing controls if you are well enough in organic chemistry well enough in your pharm- pharmaceutics yes you can get into the cmc cmc is a very very broad scope like uh, sub categories or number of sub categories life cycle maintenance compliance like operations um, um this module one labeling all will come under the one umbrella as quality assurance as quality department of cmc so first i have started my career as a uh, cmc person only uh, as a plant regulatory cmc person and then completely uh, global regulatory fas where i've uh, tasted the uh, all these categories and then migrated back so as an day to day activity um, it depends on the sub category of your um, uh, field or whatever you selected for the regulatory within the regulatory fas okay thank you sir i'll go through a little bit a snapshot in brief in my slides so um, that will give a, a little bit more flavor for you so uh, you want me to share the uh, slides yes ma'am if everyone okay. is finished then we can move on yes yes very as is, as you say as an indian as an indian as a south indian we'll say six digits good boy number of houses this car this much this much so that has been earned when you get into a proper industry and also proper move on into the uh, a later so uh, first experience is yes i will be having very low money when compared to other friends who are in marketing who are in teaching who are in other fields i'm not i'm not downgrading other professions when you are in this profession you will be having very less money but but you feel proud that you are be uh, manufacturing the medicines for the needy of course it might be a small paracetamol only but without that paracetamol these days are being um are being like um, very dreadful so first feeling is that you are manufacturing a medicine for a needy person somewhere in africa somewhere in uh, gulf countries that made me proud when i seen my tablets first tablets when i've taken in my hand as a plant regulatory affairs person which is called plant regulatory affairs and qualitations in some depart- in some smaller companies in big up in uh, in a big manufacturing mncs they'll be having a uh, separate plant regulatory affairs a certain drug regulatory doctor readies in regulatory affairs plant regulatory affairs when i taken the medicines in my first hand uh, i do remember uh, it's a called uh, um ketonol uh, ketonol tablets ketonol tablets yes when i taken that green colored tablets in my hand i felt so proud saying that i'm manufacturing the tablets for this x person or some unknown person back in africa or back in somewhere else but uh, that made me um, to drive back into further up to digging out what is for the scope for the scope for the scope but i can say my friend when you are in industry there is a lot of scope for you if you are a dedicated person i can say but experience that move on when you upskill the later or move on with your experiences when you are changing the departments yeah that that give you a lot of excitement and pleasures and pleasures as well when you explore yourself i hope yeah i'm sorry if i'm not Hi sir. Hello, it's Kirtika. Kirtika. First yeah. of all, I will say thank you, sir. You are answering each and every question, sir. Sorry, it's my pleasure. So I'm here for that only. <laughs> I, this is my gratitude towards Lakshmi, ma'am, because she is my professor. Uh, when I'm when I'm pursuing my masters, though. From my side, I ask only one question, sir. Yeah, please. What makes a uh, good in a uh, regulatory officer? Good. Good in the sense. good in the sense what made you choose to uh, join that uh, course uh, regulatory affairs what made me yes, yes sir 
So, uh, as I said to you, I pursued my mass bachelor's, and then uh, I was striving for um, uh, rather than pursuing uh, striving for to get into states. So, at that point of time, I explored the industrial out of the thinking out of the box industry positions. What are the industry positions? So, uh, through my known contacts, through my um, uh, seniors who have been into pharmacy industries, I was exploring them and I was asking them what are the positions there. Like quality assurance, somebody has explained only quality assurance, only regulatory affairs, only formation development, only analytical development, only analysis, wet chemistry, analysis lab, these, that, that many. Uh, but um, as a person, um, when I've entered into quality assurance, let's say quality assurance, who has the uh, guy who has got experience in quality assurance, when I've asked him, what is this quality assurance major role? Then he explained this, 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 this. And uh, when I asked about a regulatory affairs person, so then he said, no, no, this, 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 this. So as such, regulatory affairs person will be having a good, good grip, or I can say good um, knowledge. And also all these subcategory persons like quality assurance, stability, F-R-N-D, A-R-N-D, uh, who is the main gatekeeper? Who is the main uh, person who will be representing on behalf of the uh, industry? Because my thinking will be out of the box only. I can say, I'm not going Sorry. So um, that particular point has made me aware to get into regulatory affairs, like out of the thinking out of the box, like who is the main gatekeeper of the pharmaceutical industry to get into one medicine to the regulated markets or to any market? What is this? Where it is coming from? So in order to explain, my dad is an, of course, he's an illiterate, but in order to explain an illiterate person, how do you define? So in that particular, to that substandards, I used to think like that. So what, what made that uh, medicine to come into market, how that market will come into medicines? Because all you, when you are a graduate, all you can see in the outside world is, oh, some ex marketing person will come and uh, um, sell the markets to the distributor. The distribution will be getting into the pharmacy outlets. How this backtrack this chain? So to get in any drug in Indian market or any other market, some regulations out there. So schedule Hutch regulations, this regulation, EMA guidelines, these guidelines are guidelines. So while these guidelines have been regulated by one person, so this particular person, who is this? That made me to think about this regulatory as department. Then when I'm exploring back myself with, with the known contacts, with the known industrial contacts, then I came to know, that, yes, the licensing authority of the particular drug product is, is done by the regulatory person. For this, you need to have the practical, practical. Then I came to know that, yes, regulatory is the best suitable position for me because I want to explore a lot of things, a lot of, uh, I want, I'm thriving for knowledge to explore the knowledge. But at the same time, as I said to you, you should have that thriving knowledge and thinking out of the box. That made me to select regulatory affairs. That is my quite passionate about, see, the person who is signing off to get the particular drug product is the regulatory affairs person on behalf of the industry, on behalf of the industry. And once it's up to the health authorities, how do you convince, how do you clarify, how do you communicate with them? It's is also on the hands of regulatory person. If I say, if I do something wrong right now, just kids, a very small example. If I do the small minor mistakes in my dossier, that will enable the company to loss for more than millions. For example, one of the client has been sued by one of the patient, millions of pounds where he has to shut down the company as well. In the Western world, not in the Indian world, I can't say in the Indian world because those have been completely non-regulated. But in Western world, the regulations are very strictly followed, very strictly amended, used, followed, and they have to be um, um, imposed on the citizens as well as the health authorities. The prime responsibility is taking care of the patient's health. And you are also one of the part of this umbrella. Of course, doctors, nurses, paramedical staff are all there are under the same umbrella. But the pharmacist, and the pharmacy, industrial pharmacist and industrial pharmacy position is that much critical to understand the primes, prime citizen health. Simple. So this may be getting to regulate it though. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You're welcome. So, oh, ma'am. Yes, on, uh, I think uh, almost uh, uh, we have been discussing for the last uh, one and a half hours. So, <laughs> Even I'm very, very much happy, ma'am, rather than going through the slides, of course, yes. um, the presentations and everything will be going through by each and everyone. Yes. But these type of questions will make me more enthusiastic. Okay, where am I? Where, where, I haven't asked these, all these questions to any of us. <laughs>
I'm and, thinking, and, I'm uh, thinking out of the box, guys. <laughs> this seminar. And uh, you have answered to their level. Uh, you have made them understand everything. And I should uh, thank you for accepting my invitation my and sparing your uh, uh, valuable time with us and enlightening us with all reg regulatory affairs aspect. Because we have heard the terminology, but we were not sure about uh, uh, what is the prospects, what is the job opportunities, whether it is uh, uh, very good in India or in abroad. And uh, for the first time, I am uh, uh, coming across all the subcategories of regulatory affairs. So okay. it was a very pleasant uh, uh, listening to you, sir. And on behalf of Chetinad School of Pharmaceutical Sciences and uh, Chetinad Institution Innovation Council, I thank you for uh, sparing your uh, valuable time with us. Uh, on behalf of all the students, I thank you once again for spending your time with us. It's my pleasure, ma'am. Uh, as, as usual, as I uh, as I'm as I'm glad that I'm trying to be in front of you, presenting myself as a regulatory professional. Of course, you might be know you you know myself as an as student when I'm when you are teaching as a uh, professor for analysis. So. So uh, I'm glad that I'm, I have taken this opportunity to be in front of you, representing myself as a successful pharmaceutical profession person. Yes. Right? I'm successful. <laughs> I feel very proud of you, Hema Kumar. It's my pleasure. I feel very proud of you. So thank you.